the GoFundMe for um, the Smith girls. Um, I know I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna go over the description again fully because I know that John covered it uh, a little bit well. But uh, basically, there were um, there were three girls that have been orphaned in the San Antonio area um, where they just went to school one day and to come home and not have both lost both your parents that day is is quite a feat but on, on that day this this happened on uh, November 27th <coughs> that Monday and um, I talked about this on Arn Ross podcast the ramen podcast when we were doing a fundraiser uh, promoting the same uh, fundraisers trying to raise fifty thousand dollars for the three young girls that were left behind. And I believe the total when I first uh, came in here was at 48,810. And so I almost had $1,000 left to hit uh, that goal. But that Monday, um, I was at work. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was just any other Monday, you know, dreading being there, whatever else, you know, the regular Mondays. And I saw some commotion on Facebook. Um, you know, I wasn't tagged in anything. It was just appearing in my timeline um, that one of my friends said, I just arrived at Scott's house. It doesn't look good. And I, I didn't know what that meant. And so I scrolled up to see what the original um, post was. And the original post was just the word goodbye and a period that Scott had put on Facebook Ooh. that morning. And as soon as I saw <laughs> that, I dropped, I dropped everything because that house is less than three miles from my workplace. I can be there in no time at all. And so I'm speeding through residential areas trying to get there. And by the time I arrived, it was already blocked off by police barricades. And uh, nobody could tell us anything. They just said it was kind of a standoff. Um, I found out from neighbors that when the police arrived, they heard two shots. And so they hadn't actually been inside the residence to find out what had occurred. And so, you know, an hour, an hour and a half went by, something like that. And um, we saw the SWAT team come up, um, you know, kind of uh, moving their truck into position and then, you know, people getting out of it and people huddled together. Then they kind of gathered behind the truck. So the truck was in front of them and then the house was on the other side of that armored, armored vehicle. And we heard you know, shots being uh, fired and we were kind of scrambling to find out what the heck was going on because the police had pushed us back some. And uh, the motorcycle cop <laughs> in front of me that was blocking the street um, kind of jokingly um, said to us that, well, if the wind changes that you know, the tear gas might irritate you, so don't just be ready for that. Like you know, saying it in a very jovial manner and which confirmed to us that they shot tear gas into the house. It was about three or four shots that were done into the house and still no word as to what had gone on in the house, what was the condition of my friends. I knew both of um, the individuals inside as well as the three girls. So the SWAT team started moving into place and we heard a loud bang and we didn't know what it was and their two dogs scrambled out of the house, which we knew that that means they had busted open the front door and the dogs were running away um, from the house. We tried to catch them and we couldn't even, they darted past us like they were running for their lives. Mm -hmm. And some of the neighbors just went to go run after them in cars. But, you know, 30 minutes or so passed and the SWAT team, they went in and all of a sudden everything got very slow. You know, everybody's sense of urgency started dying down and it was like nobody was rushing anymore nobody was worried about staying behind the armored vehicles or staying behind their police cars or anything and they didn't tell us anything but we kind of knew what was going to be expected at that point because <clears throat> I said I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> you, but, you go right ahead, man. Um, I mean, I'm really sorry for what happened to your friends. So we found out um, 
the police chief um, you know, gathered all the media forward to give an address um, to say what the SWAT team had found inside. And um, they said that they um, found the two bodies dead upstairs. And, um, <clears throat> and it kind of it hit hard right there, but I was trying to keep it together because all the cameras were there. You know, everybody was kind of focused in, so I didn't want to break down right there, but that's where we learned that it was indeed like we thought it was, where one person, one person that Scott shot his wife and then shot himself after leaving these three girls orphaned um, after the fact. But, you know, we, after a few minutes of kind of standing there and kind of going over things a little bit with um, another friend who was there, we, we decided to start trying to get something together for the girls because we knew that their lives were going to be changed. We didn't even know if they even knew what happened to their parents, um, if their schools had actually told them what happened already. So um, just a few hours later, we already started contacting um, people in the family to try to find out um, who could actually take care of the kids, you know, where they're going to go into um, protective custody or the state uh, CPS services or whatever else. And so anyway, that's where the GoFundMe that we talked about on, uh, that you and John talked about on the last show came from. And um, I think, yeah, it's there on the <coughs> screen in the back. But uh, if you go to smithgirls.org, you should be able to get to uh, it'll take you straight to that GoFundMe to try to give some financial support to these lovely young ladies. I won't say their names because that's not public information, but I know all three. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. Um, at the memorial, they were so strong, and the eldest daughter came up and uh, said some words about her mom, and it was so sweet. And it was just a lot. All right. So, but anyway, um, sorry to drag you down. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so um, if you could, you know, we're very close to that goal of the, the $50,000 mark um, for that. And it's a small thing to do for them, for the situation that they're going to have to deal with for the rest of their lives. But, you know, they were, they were a part of my circle in San Antonio. I live, I live close to that house. I'm less than five miles away, and I work even closer to that house. You know, I've, I've been over that house. I've you know, been over with Super Bowl parties, and we've volunteered and planted trees together and um, worked the food bank garden with Jennifer. And it's, it was just something that I didn't expect to see um, or hear about, or just you know, something you hear about on the news that doesn't affect you directly, but you know all these news reports that people were talking about at work that it happens to be somebody that you knew and that you were friends with, both of them. So, in any case, so I'm gonna jump back off of that now so we can uh, <laughs> get on the callers. But yes, yeah, SmithGirls.org and donate there and um, the girls they're doing okay they're gonna stay in San Antonio for the rest of the semester and after that the grandparents they're in the custody of the grandparents and they'll figure out what they want to do going forward if they're gonna move away back to their home because the grandparents had to interrupt their lives to come down and now be the caregivers for these kids for the rest of their lives ages 9 through 14 the three girls and so it's just, it's a rough situation, but, okay, sorry about that. I was determined oh. not to tr not to cry when we first started this, <laughs> um, but. Thank anyway. you for, yeah. for telling that story from such a personal point of view, because, mm -hmm. I mean, we, I was, I am one of the people who, it was just news to me, yeah. and I didn't know you were that close to them, yeah. uh, and it's, it's hard to know what to say in a situation yeah, like this. I think, uh, you know, 
I hope <laughs> people don't take advantage of the fact that they were atheists to try to make some kind of philosophical point about atheists. And I mean, I, I, at this point, I'm just, my concern went to the girl that there was nothing I can do about right. dismiss like their parents. Yeah. But for the girls, I could, mm -hmm. we could do something. And yeah. that's where all of our focus turned to that Monday night. And it was a group of us that started to get together to see, okay, what can we do? You know, how do we set this up? What are the logistics of it? You know, what are the, um, the text, like going over all this stuff to try to piece together something. Um, and when it came on the news in San Antonio, it was on the news for about a total of 15 seconds or so before they shifted to the next story in their lineup and went on about their uh. day. And it was just, it was just, it was unreal to kind of see, you know, this tragic event that happened just that day reduced to, oh, here's a 15 second piece. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now here's this next shooting that happened on another, you know, part of San Antonio, but. Right. But anyway, but well, okay. Yeah. I hope <sighs> those girls will be okay. Yeah. Yeah. That will be keeping in touch, <clears throat> that's for sure.